Hello! Who boy, I've been putting off this review for years. Literally, years. I bought this thing off eBay so long ago I can't even remember. And then I tried to film a review with it, and, well, to cut a long story short, you couldn't see the screen at all. But now, with the innovations of uh, HD camcorders and more to the fact that nobody seems to care if you can't see the screen, because you couldn't on that PDA 600 review, and this one probably isn't as bad as that, here's the Tiger Gamecom! I know, it says game.com, but you pronounce it Gamecom. I know that, because it tells you when you switch it on. It's a portable video gaming system with touchscreen technology and five built-in functions. Wow, a whole five. And it's from Tiger, Tiger Electronics, who have made many bad handheld LCD games over the years. And uh, this was kind of their foray into the, well, Game Boy rival market. With limited success, <clears throat> he said pointedly. Look, it comes with two free games, Batman and Robin and Lights Out. Great. Catalogue. Somebody paid £60 for this. Oof, I imagine it was even more expensive when it was new. Tragic. Anything else in the box of interest? Not particularly. Let's look at the back. Features. Revolutionary touchscreen stroke stylus interface. Yes, this actually has a touchscreen way before the DS. Speech and state-of-the-art sound. Internet email access with optional modem cart. Hmm, I'll bet that still works. In fact, from what I've heard, it never really worked in the first place. Built-in organiser functions. Phone book. Calendar. Calculator and built-in American spelling. Thanks for that. Automatic high score save. Two cartridge slots. Built-in solitaire. Library of exciting game cartridges. Sold separately. Also not exciting. Yeah, um, let's look at some of the screenshots, shall we? Here, yeah, this one for Batman and Robin is the only one that actually contains any game graphics. Um, well, as you can see, it looks like a Game Boy with slightly higher res. Hey, what more do you want? Answer, a lot, as you will discover. Right, the box is big, but of course, being a handheld game console and something trying to compete with a Game Boy, this device itself is very small. Oh wait, I was telling lies. It's bloody massive. This was released about the same time as the Game Boy Pocket. In fact, I think the Game Boy Pocket was out a bit before. Here's the Game Boy Pocket in comparison. One of these is more portable than the other. Can you guess which? I'll bet you can, without even trying. Yeah, they were going for some sort of big, chunky, impressive thing, but I mean, it's like the size of a Game Gear, but has a small LCD screen. But hey, it is a touch screen. Honest. Let's look at the cartridges. Little short, fat things. Batman and Robin, that one. And this one is Lights Out, which, uh, that was a separate handheld game, wasn't it, where you have to make the lights go out. You may have inferred that from the title. Right. Something of interest, this is the only system I have ever seen or heard of with two cartridge slots, look. Actually, I probably have heard of one, but I've forgotten it, so that'll do. That can go into slot numero dos. That can go into slot numero uno. There we are. Oh, actually, I've put them in upside down, so that one's in one, that one's in two. Who cares? Hint, not me. Right, let's look at the device. It's got a slightly horrible floaty D-pad, although not that bad. I have seen worse. Bizarrely, it doesn't uh, line up straight. Perhaps that's done for ease of hand use. Who knows? The screen itself, uh, bigger than the Game Boy a bit. Yeah, a bit. Not really going to set the world on fire. Certainly not for the size and indeed the weight of this, as it takes four double A's. Bear in mind the Game Boy Pocket took two triple A's. Also, the touchscreen is a really early horrible thing. You can actually see the net on it. You know, the little grid underneath that uh, stops the... Um, top of the touchscreen touching the bottom bit at all times, which is, of course, how it tells when you've pushed somewhere you physically touch something against something else. Mmm, resistive. On-off switch, that's useful. Four buttons, A, B, C and D. Glad to see D getting a showing there. <sighs> Menu, sound, pause for thought. And most importantly, a horrible, clunky stylus thing, stuck right in the front, just where you don't want it. And it's got Tiger written on it twice. Thanks, lads. Right, what have we got up the top here? There's some sort of slot or thing. Can't make it out. What does it say? Com port. Oh, there we are. Presumably that's where you would plug in your modem thing, if you had such a thing. A uh, AC adapter. 
What have we got there? Contrast and volume. If I remember the contrast on this isn't exactly fantastic. It has two settings, black and slightly less black. Um, you've got your headphone output at the bottom, the cartridge port at the side, and some information on the back for people who like to read about battery ratings. How exciting. Copyright 1997, Tiger Electronics Limited. Never let them forget. Never. Right, I'm going to fiddle with the lighting in order to try and get enough light to actually show the screen. I may have to sit on the surface of the sun. Prepare for the jump cut. Oh dear, well, I've managed to get enough light to uh, shine on the GameCom screen so that the video camera will pick it up. And it involves basically having a professional photographic studio light on permanently behind me. <laughs> yep, that's the kind of depth you've had to go to. It's also reduced the amount of reflection on the screen, which was very, very bad. It's still very bad, but just not very, very bad anymore. You'll have to try and avoid the picture of the camcorder at all times. Right, as you can probably tell, I've fixed the focus in close, which is why it's blurry now. No, it's not. Here I am. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming out. Uh, do try and avoid the horrifying, and I do mean horrifying, reflections. Right, are you ready for the power of the Gamecom? I'll bet you're not, because nothing, nothing can prepare you. Thank you, Mr. Monotone. Yes, this is indeed the only console where it has to say its own name so you know how to pronounce it. Right, what have we got going on? Cartridge. Wow. Phone book. Ooh, calendar. Wow, just what all the kids wanted. A phone book and a calendar. And a calculator. <laughs> hey, Always great to use a calculator without any proper buttons. A high score and solitaire. Go on then. Let's have a quick look through the absolutely mortifyingly useless features in this thing. Um, let's start with phone book. Thank you. Wow, it's got like a really awkward little keyboard and you can type in people's phone numbers. Will to live sapping. Quickly, to the menu. Do you want to exit? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. Look, look at this. Rather than actually pressing which option you want, you have to press yes or no and then separately press enter. Who made this user interface and why were they allowed to live? Right, you know then, calendar. What the hell was that? Um, well, it thinks it's 1997, that's always nice. Um, it's a calendar, presumably, if something happened on the 16th there. No, you can't actually tap a specific date. No, what, what do we do then? Oh. Is it literally just a calendar? You can't actually put your own entries on or anything? It's, you can just look at dates? <sighs> Bloody hell. Not really feeling this so far, I don't know about you. Um, right, get us out of that. Um, what's this calculator? Go on. Wow, flashy laser calculator. Go on then, what's 12 times 145? <gasps> oh, hang on, that's not a times button, that's a full stop dot thing. Oh no. Well, let's times that by 140 for no reason whatsoever. And I've accidentally pressed 1 because the touch screen's a bit iffy. Marvellous. Equals. There we are. That's called maths. Or math if you're American, because you're only allowed to have one over there due to a budget deficit or something. I don't know. Right. Exit. High score. Of which I doubt there are any. Oh wait. There's a high score of 0, 2 on for Megamix, that's Fighters Megamix, I'll be showing you that later, and a high score of absolutely naff all on Solitaire. Well, that's that sorted. Yes. What is Solitaire like then? Oh, it's got tigers. And somebody opening a bag of crisps by the sound of it. Alright, let's take the ace away. Alright, let's take the ace away. do you? What? No, I don't really understand how this is working. Um. Ah, there we are. Right. Um, is there anything we can move there? I can't actually tell what the hearts or diamonds are with the naked eye. Oh yeah, looking through the camcorder. I can just about make out heart diamond there. I might have to darken this a bit. Where is the contrast? I'm a little wary of altering the contrast, because the last time I did I couldn't get anything I could see for ages. There we are, that looks a bit better. Um, let's put, there we are, we've got three on that one. Can't we? Oh, there you are, that's a half-decent version of Solitaire. Probably the most fun you'll get out of the system. Spoiler. Right. 
We don't care about this built-in gubbins. We want to see the games. Cartridge, yeah. We can now play Lights Out or Batman and Robin. <gasps> Let's play Lights Out. What the bloody hell was that? A space cartridge docking. There's no resemblance to the game whatsoever. If you die and go to hell, this is the music that plays in the elevator on the way down. It's, you can actually hear souls screaming in torment in it, listen. Deary me. Start, go on then. I know this, they had some separate handheld versions of this you could buy, didn't you? Basically, you, when you tap something, um, things happen. I go, oh, hang on. I can barely make out what's on the side here. Bear with me. I'll have to move it up to my face. Um, start is in the bottom there. Right, let's try that. <gasps> here we go. That's it. Basically, any of these you click on, it then changes the uh, colour from white to black or black to white, and does that to all the nine round it, if I recall. Yep. Easy. I didn't mean nine round it, I meant the four round it, sorry. So if you sort of press that one, it does the four. Oh, you get what I mean, it's a simple game. It's quite good fun. It's not going to set the world on fire. It's quite nice when it was a little um, separate handheld thing. No, it doesn't start very difficult, does it? Um, and you know, it ain't quite Tetris, but it's not bad. And for something that came free with the console, that will uh, keep you entranced for a short while. So yeah, we don't mind that. And there's no sort of problems with graphics or anything, because there aren't really any. Right, menu please. Here's something with a lots of graphics. Wait for it. Batman and Robin. Oh wow. That's just... Well, it's just bizarre, frankly. So anyway, here's a video game version of one of the worst games ever made. Um, I meant films ever made. I've just given away how bad this game is, haven't I? <laughs> Damn it, I've given away the ending with a Freudian slip. Right. Calling Batman, calling Batman. Why don't they just phone them? It'd be loads quicker. Right, start options or exit. Oh, I shall have a start, I think. Bear with me. Let's move my arms up to a position where I can play this. Wow. Man, I can barely see what's happening. Ah, right. Perhaps we can make this a bit lighter again, actually. There we go. Has that helped any? A little bit, yeah. Right, so we've got Batman that side, or Robin. Who do we want, Batman or Robin? We don't want Robin, nobody wants Robin. Robin's rubbish. Let's have Batman. Oh, wow, I get to choose some equipment. Batarang stroke throwing birds. You see, this is why Robin is rubbish. Batman gets Batarangs, Robin gets throwing birds. Grappling hook, ice blast cape. What? Gas grenades and ice blades for well, your uh, Torville and Dean memories. Um, do I get all these? No, can I select some? I don't know, I can't really see what's going on actually. Um, I'm going to have batarangs and grappling hook, please. I can't seem to let him select more than that. Right, let's go. Little one, stage one. Often a good place to start. This reminds me a bit of the Lynx, Atari Lynx game, uh, Batman Returns. I, I agree! Oh, what? So basically, every time Batman gets hit, he orgasms? Something weird going on here. Something else is weird going on. I can't see what the bloody hell's happening. One of the major problems with the game con... How do you hit him? Hit him, do something! All he does is use this grappling thing. Here! Is he punching? Is he kicking or something? Is he, oh, sorry, this is just temporarily driving me mad. Right, yeah, here we are. Yay! Eat punch, Evelton, or whatever you are. Right, <clears throat> one of the problems you may notice with the game calm is, remember the early Game Boy screen was a bit blurry? They only got nothing on this. Look at it. Well, you probably can't, so you can barely make it out. But it's no better to the naked eye. Basically, it's a completely blurry mess. You can't see what the hell is going on at any stage. Do shut up, Batman. You mean to freak me out. Does it sound like a bad 70s porno? Oh, hang on, he's on the floor. Is he dead? No, he's up again now, I think. Can you make out any of this at all? Because I bloody can't. Oh, hang on. There's a Batman-shaped thing. Yep, looks like Batman when he stands still. Can we jump up? We have grappling all. Ooh, yeah. Oh, he's falling down again. And oh, now I can't see what's happening. Basically, 
One of the many hardware flaws of the Gamecom was the screen. Can't see what the hell's happening. I can't seem to control anything. Um, it's just a blurry mess. And I... Uh, <sighs> Let's take a few seconds to recover. <clears throat> Yes, there's nothing more infuriating than a game you can't see, and uh, the Gamecom was indeed a mass of them due to its horribly blurry piece of shit that accidentally got fitted where it should have had a screen for displaying games. Right, let's take out Lights Out and put in Fighters Megamix! Fighters Megamix! I've forgotten how to fix the focus. Um, basically, this was a Sega Saturn exclusive, I believe, other than the Gamecom version, of course, where all the characters from Virtua Fighter had a big fight with the characters from Fighting Vipers, which is a relatively obscure game that was like a more fast-paced Virtua Fighter. Um, had sort of weird things like you could knock people through walls and the characters had armour that flew off, and uh, I can't really remember because it's been over a decade since I've played it. Anyway, <clears throat> you can play as your favourite fighter, as long as your favourite fighter is one of the handful included, Use the compete.com cable, oh sorry, compete.com cable, sold separately to challenge a friend, as if anybody would be friends with somebody who owns a Gamecom, and go for the knockout punch. Yes, this is a good thing to go for. What does it say? It's Virtua Fighter 2 versus Fighting Vipers. Two arcade smash hits smashing into... This sounds like it was written by a bad DJ. Two arcade smash hits smashing into each other in the ultimate battle for supremacy. It's cutting-edge combat. It's also filled with surprises. Try to unlock your favourite characters from Daytona USA and Virtua Cop. This is fighting like you've never experienced before. Play alone or with the Competecom cable, available separately. Play head-to-head -head against a friend for face-kicking, stomach-churning action. Yes, there'll be stomach-churning action. That's the blur from the screen. Uh, apparently this works exclusively with Tiger's Gamecom portable gaming system. Damn, I was going to plug it into my Auric Atmos. Oh, well. Oh, wow. Instruction books. I didn't bother with you before. Let's have a quick look, because it's always useful with a fighting game to know the moves. So let's say we want to play as Akira Yuki. He's called Akira. The legendary master of Hakuyuken, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right, with his moves. Oh. It doesn't tell you any of the moves. Hooray! We like that. Hmm, that information may be false. Notes page. There are many other special attacks and surprises hidden throughout this game. When you come across one, write it down here for future reference. Have fun. Tell you a different thing you could do, your fucking job, and write the bloody moves down so we know how to play the game, you... Right, go on then, let's just see which characters are included. From Virtua Fighter we have um, Akira, Pi, Lion, and Pi, uh, Jackie, and from Fighting Vipers we have Barn, Candy, Sandman, I remember he was a big bloke who was obsessed with the number three, inexplicably, and Marla. Not the composer. Um, there's also hidden characters. I think I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, you can have Janet from Virtua Fighter, which is interesting because she has a gun. In the Saturn version, she had the same moves as uh, one of the characters that was introduced in Virtua Fighter 3, whose name I can't remember. Uh, Oi? A? 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 Oi? I don't know, it's spelt something like AOI or something, I can't remember. Uh, you can also be the Virtua Fighter kids version of Sarah which is basically Sarah from Virtua Fighter, but she's really small and got a gigantic distended cranium. Um, you can be... What are the other two? They're really odd. Oh yeah, the um, there's like a Middle Eastern character with a sword, who was one who's rejected from Virtua Fighter 1. He's in there. And I think the other one is the car from Daytona USA, which kind of stands up on its back wheels and punches you with its front wheels. I'm not joking, by the way. That was in the Saturn version as well. Anyway, <coughs> enough talking and putting off playing it. Oh dear, I've played this before. You'd know why I was putting it off if you had. Right, here we go. That never gets old. <laughs> oh god, I'm such a liar. Right, cartridge. Fighters Megamix. The power! Is it working? Oh yeah, here we are. Blah, 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 we don't care. We wish to cause a ruckus and some fuss. 
Okay, what's happened to music? Isn't music like a series of notes designed to make a sort of melodic tune? Because this is just random beeping, more so than the thing at the beginning of my videos. Oh, so this play. Press A. Okay. Okay, let's have one player mode. I'm going to be... Oh, notice that I've unlocked Janet, look. I'll show you why later. Um, Jackie. I shall go for course A. Start. Looks pretty good so far. Okay, they're moving and blurring. That's not so good. Now, <clears throat> you know how fighting games have moves? Not this one! Basically, you have a basic punch and kick and a flying kick, and you can sort of crouch and hit. And that's pretty much it. Most of the characters have, like, one other move. Normal move, forward and back array or something. Often it doesn't seem to work, from what I've seen of online FAQs telling me how to do it. And every character has at least one super move! Oh wait, I'm lying. For instance, Jackie has no special moves at all. Literally no special moves. Akira has two, I've never got either of them to work. This really is not a good game. Wow, he sounded angry. Maybe he's played this. We've won! Hooray! Truly, this is a great victory. Time for some more button mashing. Oh no, I think I've fallen. It's hard to tell. Kicky kicky, punchy punchy. Ah, here's the answer. Get them in the corner, repeatedly punch them, and they just die. Notice they don't fall over at the end of a bout. They just kind of stand there for a second and then collapse. This is especially amusing if you hit them in the air at the end, because they kind of hover like freaks. Never. How do we get back out of this pause? Press pause to continue. That must be rubbish. Menu, please. My god, I want to exit. You have no idea how much I want to exit. There are not words in the human language which would express how much I want to exit. But I'm going to play again, and I'm going to select Janet, because she has a special move I can actually do. Well, it works about half the time. Because, <clears throat> you know, you may have noticed the controls are a little bit sluggish. Oh, such an understatement, it made my mouth bleed slightly. Oh, that's better. Right. <clears throat> Janet. Uh, of course, there you go, and then. Damn it, Janet, let's go. You know she was in Virtual Cop? Well, she gets her gun to shoot with. There we are. And if you do it right, she sort of flashes and shoots. The thing is, it's impossible for the enemy to avoid it. Even if they're on the floor, it will inexplicably hit them. And if you can do it quick enough, you can just combo it infinitely. So, essentially, it's a fighting game, unless you choose Janet, and she can just shoot the opponent to death. Some purists would regard that as cheating in a fighting tournament, I feel. But not Janet. No, she just wants to watch people die of gunshot wounds. God, this is so bad. No, it's not excellent. It's murder from a police officer as well. Oh, dear. Tell you what. Let's turn the autofocus back on. Ah, now everything's better. Do you know why? Because this fucking thing's turned off. Oh, seriously, this really is an astonishingly bad bit of kit. Um, there are no words to describe it except all the ones I used during the review. No, seriously, this thing sucks ass more than a professional ass sucker. The screen's a blurry mess. Um, it doesn't quite have the oomph to actually output the graphics if stuck in all the games. Other games for the system, incidentally, included Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil 2, I think. I mean, you can uh, work out yourself how bad that is. And if that wasn't quite nasty enough, <clears throat> which it is, there was a version of Duke Nukem 3D. I'll just let you uh, think how that must play on it. Stop crying, the review isn't over yet. So there we go, that is the Gamecom. I wonder why it failed next to the Game Boy Pocket. You know, the one with a better screen, far better games, far greater range of games, I believe it was cheaper at the time, and here's the really good thing, you can actually fit it in your bloody pocket, whereas this one you have to carry it in a truck behind you. Ah, dearie me. I'll tell you what this is. It's a big, fat waste of space with almost no redeeming qualities. It's supposed to be entertaining, but it's just annoying. I mean, some idiots might sort of laugh at it for a bit, but let's face it, most of us will just find it irritating and depressing. In fact, it's exactly the same as Kevin James.